वेलकम टू एनालिसिस ऑफ जोग्राफी क्वेश्चन पेपर एज यूजल द क्वेश्चन पेपर इज देयर ऑन अवर यूट्यूब चैनल दैट इज सावरकर आई एस स्टडी सर्कल यू कैन विजिट एंड फर्स्ट सॉल्व द क्वेश्चन पेपर एंड देन ऑब्जर्व दिस एनालिसिस फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन वर्ल्ड टॉलेस्ट फोल्ड माउंटेन इज ऑप्शन ए अरवली ऑप्शन बी हिमालय ऑप्शन सी रॉकी एंड ऑप्शन डी ब्लैक फॉरेस्ट सो यू आर अवेयर दैट हिमालय इज ए फोल्ड माउंटेन एंड इट इज द टॉलेस्ट माउंटेन सो बोथ वे आंसर बी इज राइट ऑप्शन सो हियर आंसर इज बी हिमालय सेकेंड गोइंग बाय लैटिट्यूड्स इन द मंथ ऑफ डिसेंबर the hottest city among the following is option a johannesburg option b baku option c samarkand and option d kashgar now here little bit general knowledge and knowledge of history is there then all right you are aware that going by latitudes in the month of december uh the hottest city so if you check uh, first city johannesburg it is there in south africa so in south hemisphere so in december south hemisphere is having summer north hemisphere is having winter so i can opt for johannesburg but let us check other uh, baku it is in north hemisphere formerly it was part of ussr today it is part of azerbaijan so it is in north hemisphere that means in december it is cold uh, samarkand you are aware the invader of india babur zairuddin al mohammad babur basically he was from samarkand so at that time they were calling this as turkestan today it may be there in tajikistan or something like that because at that time we were calling beyond afghanistan there is turkestan so uh samarkand that is there in north hemisphere only that means it is also cold in the december then kashgar it is there in takla makan that is north of jammu and kashmir desert is there cold desert if you are aware that uh, mahmud of ghazni was having threat from the king of kashgar and uh during his total invasion course for 2 years he was not able to invade india because he was engaged in war with kashgar at that time so it is also there in north hemisphere so uh baku samarkand and kashgar three belonging to north hemisphere and only one belonging to south hemisphere december that means uh summer in south hemisphere therefore i have to give answer as a johannesburg third question sidereal day is of dash dash hours option a 23 hours option b 25 hours option c in winter 23 and in summer 25 hours and option d none of these so uh, what is sidereal day first so total time taken for rotation of earth that is calculated with respect to distance time if you are talking of sun then every day earth is moving 1 uh, degree or approximately 1 degree towards next side and therefore sunrise to sunrise that is more time uh, you can observe our geography lecture where we have explained this with diagrams and all that uh, whereas if you are comparing with distance time then we can calculate accurately it is 23 hours 56 minutes and a few seconds but that few seconds and etc it is not there a uh, whole number is given there is no question of a uh, small day and big day during sidereal day and therefore uh, none of these that is d is a correct answer black forest is the example of fold mountain block mountain rift valley and volcano 
some people may say it is example of cake so forget of that in geography this is a example of block mountain so right answer here is a block mountain fifth question monsoon season rainfall on sahyadri mountain is an example of orographic precipitation convectional precipitation cyclonic precipitation and none of these so specifically mentioned that monsoon season rainfall on sahyadri that is example of orographic precipitation because of some obstacle the winds and clouds they are going upwards but obstacle is important then that precipitation is called as orography if because of only heating effect that clouds are going upwards then that is called as cyclonic precip uh, sorry uh, convectional precipitation sixth question at 30 degree celsius suppose 30 g water is required to saturate 1 cubic meter air and actual amount of water is 10 g then how many statements are true okay so uh, at 30 degree celsius suppose 30 g water is required to saturate 1 cubic meter air that means the capacity of that air at 30 degree celsius is 30 g per cubic meter and actually that means uh, we can say the absolute humidity that is 10 g per cubic meter then how many statements are true its absolute humidity is 10% so its 10 g per cubic meter so first answer is true second it is absolute humidity is 33.33% no so if you compare it is one third then the relative humidity you can say that is 33.33% so second option is not correct third the air is dry air yeah if 60% or less than 60% relative humidity is there then air is dry if relative humidity is more than 60% the air is humid if you are considering only dry and humid then so uh, statement is true its relative humidity is 30% no we just discuss that relative humidity is 33.33% that means here two statements are true two statements are false so question is asked how many statements are true so two that means b is the correct answer seventh question which condition amongst the following will have highest high tide you are aware uh, Okay, let us go back question first. Which condition amongst the following will have highest high tide? Option A: Earth at perihelion, Moon at apogee, and crescent moon. B: Earth at perihelion, Moon at perigee, and new moon day. Option C: Earth at aphelion, Moon at perigee, and gibbous moon. D or that aphelion moon at apogee and crescent moon you are aware that uh, for this highest high tide sun moon and earth should be collinear preferably sun and moon towards one side or sun and moon towards opposite exactly opposite side if they are on exactly opposite side it is a full moon day so none of the situation is explaining here full moon day eliminate new moon day yeah one situation is there which is explaining us new moon day that is option b uh because in case of crescent moon or in case of gibbous moon they are not collinear little bit angle is no doubt develop so we want collinear condition so going by this new moon day is the fantastic condition where you can get high tide very good high tide but again uh sun and moon should be very close to earth now here uh, new moon day condition earth is at perihelion peri means in vicinity 
है ना सन सो अर्थ इज इन विसिनिटी ऑफ सन यस सो सन एक्पियर्स बिगर एट दैट टाइम ग्रेविटी इज एक्सपीरियंस मोर मून एट पेरी जी या पेरी मीन्स अगेन विसिनिटी जी लैंड सो इट इज इन विसिनिटी ऑफ लैंड एंड न्यू मून डे सो दिस इज द वे वी कैन गेट हाइएस्ट हाई टाइड सो दैट इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज स्प्रिंग टाइड सो ऑप्शन सी सॉरी ऑप्शन बी इज राइट आंसर हियर एक्ट क्वेश्चन हाइएस्ट पीक इन पी ओ के इज ऑप्शन ए के के वन बी के टू सी के थ्री एंड डी के फोर सो आई एम कंसिडरिंग यट अनफॉर्चुनेट माई सेल्फ बिकॉज वी आर यूजिंग वर्ल्ड यट पी ओ के फॉर ऑक्यूपाइड काश्मीर we are in the hope that very soon this park occupied will get vanish out and it should belong to indian kashmir only but uh, as we are there in 2024 and yet pok is not dissolved in india officially officially means from their side i have to ask this question so highest peak that is actually second highest peak in the world and according to our claim because we say that there is no uh, concept of pok and uh, indian kashmir and all that entire kashmir according to the rule because maharaja hari singh signed out the agreement where he dissolved entire kashmir in india and therefore the highest peak in india is k2 uh, whereas it is in pok so answer is k2 that is right answer it is second highest peak in the world first highest obviously sagarmatha or that is also called as mount everest that is on the border of nepal and china ninth one city near mouth of narmada river is surat vadodara khambat bharuch out of that near mouth of a uh, river bharuch uh, sorry river narmada the option is bharuch that is the right answer tenth question person wants to visit yanta from hong kong by sea route then which is the shortest possible route ऑप्शन ए मलाक्का स्ट्रेट गल्फ ऑफ एडन रेड सी सी ऑफ मरमरा ऑप्शन बी मलाक्का स्ट्रेट इंडियन ओशन अटलांटिक ओशन पनामा कैनल ऑप्शन सी पैसिफिक ओशन पनामा कैनल स्ट्रेट ऑफ जिब्राल्टर सी ऑफ मरमरा ऑप्शन डी पैसिफिक ओशन पनामा कैनल अटलांटिक ओशन गल्फ ऑफ फिनलैंड okay so uh, let us discuss first how many of you are aware about yalta so you have to find out it is in the black sea formerly it was part of ussr you can recollect towards end of world war second a conference was held between usa england that is uk france and ussr that is conducted at yalta this is famous as yalta conference where they decided that uh, without prior permission of other party nobody should make any individual treaty with hitler we have to stop war at a time with consideration of all force this so this is the way the yalta conference was there because it was conducted at yalta because stalin joseph stalin was dictator of this uh, communist russia at that time and uh, he was not willing to go outside ussr he was insisting that whatever meeting conferences they should be there in the uh, ussr only and therefore they decided now you can check out the location of yalta it is in the black sea now you have to travel from china that is today it is belonging to china that is hong kong 
no or uh, you are having now clear cut mind i am not drawing purposefully no map is drawn here but you can take now clear cut idea that we have to travel from china now we have two ways we can go through pacific ocean but you are aware half of earth is nearly of pacific ocean so it is the longest route then which is a simple route through strait of malacca so first strait of malacca then uh, obviously indian ocean is there and uh, arabian sea but finally it is ended into uh, gulf of aden then after gulf of aden it is entering into red sea yeah then suez canal then uh, mediterranean sea and then between mediterranean sea and black sea there is a part that is called as sea of marmara so a is right option here d is also right option uh, sorry d no it's a c that is also right option but it is not the shortest route it is longest route and therefore uh, a is right option so now check out your score thanks for observing this video